Out of My Mind, Chapter 24. It's time. Camera's rolling, someone calls out. In five, four, three, two. He points at the man at center stage. The moderator, a slim guy with hair that looks like it has just been glued into place, brushes a speck off his tuxedo, adjusts his red striped tie, and begins speaking right on cue. Good evening, he says, with that perfectly modulated voice that announcers seem to be born with. My name is Charles Kingsley, and I'd like to welcome you to the Whiz Kids Southwest Ohio Regional Competition. Cheers all around. In two weeks, the winner of this competition will travel to Washington, D.C. to represent our area at the national championships. More cheers. We wish the best of luck to all our young competitors. The studio quiets. The rules are simple, Mr. Kingsley explains. Teams will be asked 25 questions. Each correct answer from each four-member team is worth one point. The maximum total team score is 100 points. He pauses so the cameras can show the scoreboard. Then he announces, the two teams with the highest scores from all preliminary rounds will meet for what we call a quiz off, so point totals are critical. The winner of that final set of quiz questions will be declared our local elementary school level champion and will proceed to the nationals in Washington. The team that emerges as the winner will appear live on national television on Good Morning America the next morning. Cheers and applause. Our first two teams to compete tonight will be Woodland Elementary and Spalding Street Elementary. Take your places, ladies and gentlemen. The four contestants from Woodland and the other three members of our team walk to the testing area, waving for the cameras. Catherine rolls me to my position, makes sure I can easily reach the buttons. Then she gives me a quick hug and walks away. I'd like to take a moment, Mr. Kingsley says, to introduce a very special participant in our competition tonight. Her name is Melody Brooks. The cameras all point in my direction. The studio lights are incredibly bright and hot. I blink rapidly. I feel damp and sweaty. Although the other contestants will stand, Melody will be seated as she answers the questions. We've made adjustments to our answer board so that she can access the buttons, but nothing else. I hear she's a fierce competitor. I try to wave, but I figure I look goofy and wobbly, so I pull my hand down. Rose stands next to me, <clears throat> with Connor in the middle and Claire on the far end. I feel like I'm going to throw up, I hear Claire whisper. Don't you dare, Connor hisses. We'll start with the practice round so you can familiar excuse me, familiarize yourself with our button system. Everyone ready? Which of the following is a mammal? A. Cat. B. Bird. C. Turtle. D. Spider. Everybody, including me, pushes A, of course. The screens in front of us light up with the letter A. Don't you wish all the questions would be that easy? Mr. Kingsley asked, chuckling. Yeah, right. Remember two things, he reminds everyone. First, this is a team competition. And second, this is not a test of speed, but of accuracy. Teams get more points if all four contestants come up with the correct answer. And the two teams with the most points meet for the finals. Are we ready? Ready. The seven contestants on stage answer. I start to hit the word ready on my board, but I decide to concentrate on the contest instead. Round one will have 25 questions. Let us begin. Number one. I tense. Here we go. The average lifespan of an adult mayfly can range from A. 1 minute to 1 hour B. 30 minutes to 1 day C. 1 day to 1 week D. 2 weeks to 1 month Bing, 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 bing. Everyone hits their buttons. Once the answers are locked in, the readouts are displayed. Everyone on our team answered B. One person on the Woodland team answered A. Mr. Kingsley smiles and says, Woodland has three points and Spalding now has four with all correct responses. We can do this. I can do this. Bring on the next one. Number two, he intones. The battles of Lexington and Concord in the American Revolutionary War were fought in what year? A. 1774 B. 1775 C. 1776 D. 1777 That one is a little tricky. I press B, however. So does everyone else. The score is now 7 to 8. Mr. Kingsley continues. In literature, the word oxymoron means which of the following? A. A combination of contradictory words. 
B. The outcome of a sequence of events. C. An implied reference to a literary or histor historical event. D. A symbolic story or narrative. I'm fairly sure the answer is A, but that word could mean big-headed cripple kid who thinks she can win a national quiz competition. When the answer is shown on the screen, Connor got it wrong, and so did two members of the Woodland team. So the score is now set at Woodland 9, Spalding 11. We're still up, but we have 21 more questions to go. The next question, Mr. Kingsley says, deals with math. Oh crap, I'm dead meat. There are 2,357 paintings in art museum. The museum has 124 rooms, which is a reasonable estimate for the number of paintings in each room. A, 10, B, 20, C, 60, D, 200. Yep, dead, rotten meat. Let's see. I've got to visualize a museum and rooms and lovely paintings. How many in a room? Not sure. Divide what into what? Not sure. I'm going to say 60. When the answer flashes as B, I feel like an idiot. But Rose got it wrong too. And so did two kids on the Woodland team. The score stands at 13 to 11. By the time we get to the 25th question, I'm sweaty and thirsty, but I'm pumped. The lead bounced back and forth between the two teams a couple of times. Sometimes they were in front of us, and sometimes we forged ahead with points. I got most of the language arts answers right, but the math questions stumped me. Connor can't spell, so he missed several of those questions. Rose is weak in history. Claire has trouble with science. The Woodland team was about the same. Some kids good in some areas, others good in others. We now come to the final question of our first two teams. Mr. Kingsley announces. He clears his throat and begins. <clears throat> A weather event that measured 6.5 on the Richter scale would be an A, tornado, B, hurricane, C, earthquake, D, tsunami. Bing, 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 bing. I punch C and relax. I did not have a tornado spaz. Connor, Rose, and Claire all got the final question correct as well. Two people on the Woodland team answered hurricane instead. When the results are tallied, our team has a total of 81 points. Woodland ends up with 77. Congratulations, Spalding, Mr. Kingsley says with a polished smile. The two highest scoring teams will meet for the final round later tonight. Good luck, and we hope to see you again. Victory for round one. As the show breaks for commercial, we are all escorted to a special waiting room in the back. The students from Woodland look really disappointed. That's it for them, for the whole competition. All they can do now is watch as the second two teams head to the stage for their session under the lights. Mom, Dad, Penny, Miss V, and Catherine are all waiting for me in the back room, hugging me and kissing me like I've won the lottery or something. Catherine does a little happy dance. Dad tells me he filmed the whole thing on his camcorder. You rocked, Melody, Miss V shouts. I am so proud of you, sweetie, my mom says. Can I have a Coke? I type as quickly as I can. I feel breathless. Everybody laughs as Catherine rushes to find me a paper cup for the sodas that are sitting on ice in the waiting room for the contestants. Mom pours dribbles of the ice-cold Coke into my mouth. One sip at a time, making sure I don't spill on my shirt. I am so thirsty. I don't even care that people from the other teams are staring at me. Mr. Deming, after talking to Rose and Connor and Claire, bounds over to us beaming. This is such a thrill, Melody. You were amazing out there. I'm so proud of our team and extremely proud of you. Thanks, I tap. What's next? We wait for the next teams to compete. Then we'll meet and beat the other high-scoring team and pack our bags for Washington. Don't pack yet, I type with a grin on my face. I've been packed for ten years, he tells me. I've just been waiting for the right team. This is our year. I just know it. He wanders off to talk to the other parents. I never thought about what teachers dream about. I had no idea what a big deal this is for him. Rose comes over and squats down next to Penny. I like your hat, she tells Penny, who is holding Doodle closely and wearing a blue polka dotted hat with a red feather. Was he? Penny says gleefully. How's my favorite baby girl? Rose says in her whispery voice. Was he? Penny repeats. 
You did really good, Melody, Rose says to me. You too, I type. You think we have a chance for the finals? Yep. And Washington? Yep. And being on Good Morning America? Oh, yeah. Claire stays on the other side of the room with her parents, but Connor ambles over and stands next to Rose. You're okay, Melody, he says. You beat me on a couple of those. You rock in math, I tell him. I know, he replies with a grin, but I still can't spell. I hope they don't have any spelling questions on the finals. I gotta go to the bathroom, Rose says suddenly. I'm so nervous about the finals. She hurries out. I know what she means. Butterflies, moths, giant bumblebees flutter inside me. When we were on camera, it felt like it took a million years to complete our round. But in just a few minutes, the second set of contestants come back to the waiting room. The school with the little crowns won round two with 79 points. Then, within another half hour, Edison Elementary clinches the third round with a score of 80. Finally, a school called Perry Valley wins the fourth round with 82 points, just one more point than us. <clears throat> I watch them, Miss V tells me, when they troop back into the room, excited and victorious. They're really good. Should we worry? I ask. Of course not. Our team is the best because they have a secret weapon. You. Suddenly, there is a rush of activity in the room as stagehands come in to get us. Perry Valley and Spotting Street, we need you back on camera for the finals. You are our two top scoring schools. Congratulations. We hurry back to our places. The lights seem brighter this time. Mr. Kingsley returns to his position, gets his microphone adjusted by the stage crew, and shouts, Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the final round of our regional Whiz Kids competition. The winners of this round will represent us all in Washington, D.C. in just two weeks. All members of the winning team, along with their chaperones, will receive an all-expenses-paid trip to our nation's capital, three nights in a hotel and tours of the city. Trophy! Trophy! Someone yells. Oh, the famous Wids Kids Championship Award! The winning team in Washington gets to take home that huge golden trophy. They receive a guest appearance on Good Morning America, and their school will receive a check for $2,000 to be used for academic endeavors. Lots of whoops at that. Let us begin. Teams, are you ready? Ready, they all reply. I am ready too.